Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Bob Squared Finance. Let's turn it right over to the CEO here. Recognizing that revenue and gross margin are weighted toward the second half of the year, we are pleased to say that GoPro is off to a good start in 2018, with robust sell-through proving there is strong global demand for our products. Revenue in the first quarter was $202 million, and camera unit growth increased 3% year over year. We reduced weeks of inventory in the channel by 30%, a trend that positions us well for the introduction of higher margin products scheduled for the second half of the year. We ended the quarter with $145 million in cash and expect to increase our cash balance in the second quarter. Our results were driven by strong sell-through of Hero 5 Black and Hero 6 Black, along with the launch of our new $199 entry-level Hero at the end of Q1. Hero is selling in line with our expectations, and we are expanding distribution to large retail partners like Walmart and Target in the second quarter. Brian will offer more detail on our financial performance, but I want to highlight four topics that summarize the quarter and point to our potential for the year. First, our time-tested good, better, best product strategy is working once again. Sell-through gained momentum during the quarter, and we grew share in North America, APAC, EMEA, and Latin America. Second, our recent increase in marketing is beginning to have a positive impact on sell-through. In March, we ramped our global advertising and began seeing a positive impact in early Q2. We will continue to ramp marketing during Q2 and throughout the rest of the year. Third, we are driving down weeks of supply in the channel, clearing the way for new, higher margin products in the second half of the year. Fourth, we are executing against our full year sub $400 million OPEX target, a cumulative reduction of more than $300 million since 2016 and the lowest it's been since 2014. We expect to achieve this while maintaining a robust product roadmap and growing our global marketing spend. In summary, we're happy with our Q1 results and believe we can translate this momentum into a successful 2018 for GoPro. Next, I'll provide a brief summary of our progress towards restoring growth and profitability. To start, our focus on analytics has given us a better understanding of our consumers and their purchase behavior. And we believe this is reflected in our first quarter results. According to the NPD group, in the first quarter, GoPro led the U.S. action camera category at all price points with 86% unit share and 95% dollar share. GoPro is also performing well in Europe. According to GFK, again, at all price points in the action camera market, GoPro held 44% unit share and 72% dollar share. And we continue to see strong growth in the Asia Pacific region led by Japan, where according to GFK, GoPro unit sales grew by 22% year over year. Unit sales in China were down year over year due to a tough comp against a significant Q1 2017 promotional push. And in Korea, Unit sales grew 46% year over year. Sequentially, GoPro's unit share in Japan, China, Korea, and Thailand, as tracked by GFK, increased from 45% to 52%, and dollar share increased from 63% to 65%. We see an ongoing growth opportunity in APAC. In summary, these stats demonstrate that GoPro has maintained its category and market share leadership and that contrary to a common misconception, competition has not had a meaningful impact on our business, except at the very low end in EMEA. And now I want to call out GoPro's spherical camera, Fusion, which began shipping in North America in November. According to NPD, in the first quarter, Fusion captured 41% dollar share in its category. We're excited about our roadmap for Fusion, an important long-term growth opportunity for GoPro.
Another indicator of GoPro's momentum is our social metrics and industry awards. In the first quarter, GoPro gained more than half a million social media followers, bringing our total to approximately 36 million worldwide, up 4.2 million year over year. Our organic social engagement rate which is a measure of our community's interaction with GoPro's brand and content, has gone up 27% sequentially and 21% year over year. On our fastest growing platform, Instagram, we saw an increase of 245,000 followers in the quarter, bringing us to a total of 15 million. Our YouTube channel subscribers increased 4% year over year. And GoPro content was viewed 148 million times on social media, up more than 8% year over year. Building on this social momentum, this week at Facebook's F8 conference, Instagram showcased GoPro to highlight a co-developed feature that allows users to share their content directly from the GoPro app to Instagram stories. This is a great feature, and there's more to come from our partnership with Facebook. In closing, GoPro is performing well. We are scaling our global marketing campaigns, channel inventories are coming down, and we are positioning ourselves for new, higher margin products in the second half of the year. We believe this, combined with our sub $400 million operating expense target, sets the stage for 2018. With that, I'll turn it over to Brian. Thanks, Nick. Let's turn to an overview of our performance for the first quarter and guidance for the rest of 2018. Revenue for the first quarter of 2018 was $202 million, compared to $219 million for the same period in 2017. Camera units shipped grew 3% year-over-year, driven by demand of our Hero 5 and Hero 6 Black cameras and our recently launched entry-level Hero camera. On a gap basis, net loss was $76 million, a 31% improvement year over year, resulting in a $0.55 cent net loss per share. On a non-gap basis, net loss was $47 million, a 25% improvement year over year. Net loss per share on a non-gap basis was $0.34, cents, an improvement of $0.10 cents from the prior year. Adjusted EBITDA was negative $34.5 million in the first quarter of 2018, an improvement of $11 million from a year ago. Cash and investments were $145 million in the first quarter of 2018. As of March 31, 2018, we had the ability to borrow up to $68 million under our asset-backed credit facility. We expect cash balances to increase in the second quarter and second half of 2018. We ended the quarter with inventory of 133 million, a sequential decrease of 18 million. We are managing our inventory to leave us well positioned for sales of our higher margin products in the second half of 2018. Our sustained efforts around cost management resulted in non-GAAP OPEX of $94 million in the first quarter of 2018, a $37 million or a 28% reduction compared to the first quarter of 2017. We believe GoPro is on track to reduce full year 2018 operating expenses to below $400 million while maintaining our product roadmap and increasing marketing. Additionally, headcount is now below 1,000, down from a peak of nearly 1,800 employees in 2016. Turning to the balance sheet, accounts receivable at March 31st was 81 million, down from 113 million at the end of Q4 2017, and DSOs are reported at 36 days. During the first quarter of 2018, our cash balance reduced by $103 million. This was the result of price protection, operating losses, bonus payments, restructuring, and working capital, which was partially offset by the receipt of a tax settlement from the IRS of approximately $33 million. As previously mentioned, we expect our cash balances to increase in the second quarter as a result of lower losses and improvements in working capital. Now I'll dive 
dive into more detail on our business performance. First quarter, Street ASP defined as total reported revenue divided by camera units shipped was down 10% year over year to $267, primarily due to lower sales of Karma, sales incentives, and an increase in sales of our entry level Hero camera. Camera units shipped in the first quarter totaled 758,000. We experienced solid demand for our Hero 6 Black and Hero 5 Black cameras, which accounted for over 60% of our camera units and dollars shipped in the quarter. Price moves taken in December 2017 resulted in solid share gains in both Asia and Europe. According to GFK, in Asia, GoPro picked up 30 percentage points of share in the $200 to $299 price band. Moving on to our retail performance, according to internal estimates, GoPro's year-over-year -year global unit sell-through decreased by approximately 3%. Excluding end-of-life cameras sold at a discount, we estimate global unit sell-through of our core camera line increased 2% year-over-year. -year. And more importantly, for cameras priced at $299 and above, we estimate sell-through on a year-over-year -year basis increased by approximately 10%. Overall, inventory in the channel decreased sequentially, and we estimate forward weeks of inventory decreased 30% to 11 weeks. We expect weeks of inventory to decline further by the end of the second quarter. In the action camera market, according to NPD, GoPro held the top four cameras in North America. In Europe and APAC, we believe GoPro held the top three cameras. And for the 17th straight quarter, more than four years in a row, GoPro was the best-selling camera in the overall digital imaging category in North America. I will now move on to guidance for the remainder of 2018. For the second quarter of 2018, we expect revenue to be between $260 and $280 million. We expect gross margin percentage to be in the upper 20s. We expect operating expenses to be slightly above $100 million, up sequentially primarily due to advertising. We expect non-GAAP tax expense of a half a million dollars. For the second half of 2018, we expect revenue to grow relative to the same period in 2017. We expect Q3 2018 to represent a lower proportion of second half revenue compared to the same period in 2017. Q3 2017 benefited from the introduction of new products. By contrast, in 2018, the timing of new products will shift revenue into Q4. We expect gross margin to recover to the upper 30s due to the introduction of new, higher margin products. We expect non-GAAP tax expenses to be between $1 million and $2 million. From a profitability perspective, on a non-GAAP basis, we expect to be unprofitable in the first half of 2018 with an expectation of returning to non-GAAP profitability in the second half, resulting in a narrow loss for the year. With that, operator, we are ready to take questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Hit like and comment down below.